You've been waiting for it. We've been designing it. We've been dreaming about it. We've been teasing each other about it. Finally, finally, we are gonna get to carve those jade necklaces that we've designed for each other. This morning we are heading to Bones and Stones, which is a place in Hokitika where you can carve your own greenstone pendant. So for the past couple of days, Robin and I have been designing a greenstone pendant for each other, and today we are finally revealing our designs and we're gonna start carving. So we are meeting up with Steve from Bones and Stones and the first step of our whole carving process is to discuss our design. We also have to transfer our design doodled on a piece of paper onto something a little bit more professional so we can get it onto a stone. Design wise, I came up with kind of an egg shape for Laura which is an infinity loop showing the bond that Laura and I have as well as the Koru shape inside which shows her love for nature. She came up with kind of a fishing hook which shows productivity as well as a whale tail because she knows my love for the maritime world. Once our designs are finalized, it is time to pick our jade. So jade or greenstone or punamu as it's known in Maori comes in loads of different shades and patterns. So we're picking the perfect pattern and starting to carve. Hokitika is also known as jade country and that's because loads of this jade or greenstone can be found along Hokitika beach and the waterways nearby. After picking our stone, the first step is starting to shape it into what it's going to be looking like later on. And straight away, as soon as we get started, we can definitely notice that carving stone is much harder than carving bones. If you remember, a few days ago we went to carve some bones necklace and it took us about a couple of hours. But we've already been about three hours in and it's time for lunch and we are barely with decent shape. It's gonna take a long time to come up with a finished product. So during lunchtime we're actually taking the time to compare the progress that we've made as well as explaining in each other the train of thought behind the design of each of those pendants. Although the jade carving process is a pretty lengthy one, it's also a pretty relaxing one and Steve really makes sure of that. We are having a few breaks here and there where we can regroup, see our progress. Steve is giving us loads of tips of how we can improve along the way and of course there is some delicious food to be had. Steve is taking pride of being a really great teacher. He's following up on us on every single step of the carving process helping us repair any of the mistakes that we would have made or especially I made and also giving us some tips on how to use better the tools. Steve is actually really well known around Hokitika and everybody comes to him for advice on the greenstone matter. In fact we saw several backpackers coming in the shop and asking him if what they found on the beach were greenstone or not. He gave us heaps of tips on that subject and we wrote some articles on backpackerguide.nz with all his tips to find greenstone in New Zealand and also to know if it is actually greenstone. You really need to check that out because that could save you heaps on souvenirs. All right, we'll be nice and share with you three of those many tips that we got from Steve on how to find your own greenstone out on the beaches of New Zealand. So number one, look in wet areas of the beach because jade stands out more when it's wet. And number two, if you are looking in a dry area, then rub the greenstone on your face or where it's oily on your skin and it should show up whether it is green jade stone or not. And then number three, if you have a pile of green rocks, then it's most likely gonna be the odd one out that could possibly be green stone. The power of the power tool that we are using is controlled by a foot pedal which allows us to control the speed of each of the machine as well as making it really safe. If we think it's getting out of control, we just have to step out, easy as. This really helps for this step of the process, which is the fine detailing. Then we move on to sanding our greenstone pendant, which will give it this really shiny and smooth look. 
I feel really in the zone for this whole process. I'm just so focused on getting this greenstone pendant right and doing all the fine little details. It is a lengthy process, but one that we can sort of share ideas on, talk between ourselves, be in our own zone. It's a really nice, like sort of therapeutic time as well. But the thing that really makes our greenstone pendants look professional is this stage of the carving process where we're now starting to polish our pendants. We're using all sorts of these buffering machines and then using just simple tools like toothbrushes and sanding paper to make these greenstones look like they are fresh from the gift store. And the last step of the process is to turn this pendant into an actual necklace and to do so we are taking some string which are I think dipped in wax and then we are braiding them together to give it this thick kind of handmade look. And ta-da! This is our finished product. It has gone from a sketch to a pendant which now we are presenting to each other in a very awkward manner. This process was so much fun and we have now got an awesome souvenir with a whole story behind it to take home with us. But now we are heading back to the Mountain Jade Backpackers for some dinner. We're having white bait, which is a special cuisine in the west coast of New Zealand. So yeah, the final thing to do is now present the necklace to each other and put it on each other's necks which never goes so smoothly the first time because your arms are everywhere and you're like, ah, take it. So, yeah, but yeah, we're happy with that. It was a long day. It was a long day of making these things, blood, sweat and tears, but the final result is pretty epic.